Hey guys, I wanna talk with you today about optimizing collaboration and focusing on management support systems in a flourishing school. Now, teachers, of course, they have a finite amount of energy and focus. And we know Dunbar's number tells us there's only so much that they can focus on. And so the question, of course, is whether it's all focus on their students or our staff and leaders or somewhere in between. Now, obviously we want that main focus on students, those unicorn teacher relationships, quality teaching and learning. But the reality for many schools is the way their management support systems work actually detracts from that. It drags teachers' attention away and uses up their energy on other things. If we think about how a lot of school leadership teams work, they have what we would describe as an issues-focused management support system. And what that means really is it depends on the type of issue a teacher is facing at any given moment as to which member of the leadership team they're supposed to talk to. You can see on the screen now, you know, depending if it's behavior management, annual leave, sick leave, workplace conflict, inclusion needs, etc., etc. I've got to somehow remember who to go to for what and not go to the wrong person or go to two different people just to solve one problem. That creates enormous cognitive load during stressful periods of time and absolutely detracts from their ability to focus in intensively on those quality relationships with their students and teaching and learning. What we do in a flourishing school is we have what's known as a person-focused management support system. So we take a completely different view. We say, right, we want to minimize the number of leaders that a teacher needs to talk to about any issue at all. And we introduce these three roles, the line manager, the professional manager, and the duty manager, and we boil it all down to the rule of three, an important neurological concept, because it's a simpler way to navigate complex systems like schools. Now, you might be wondering what explicitly we mean by these three management roles, and let's go through them now. You can see on the screen the line manager. Now, their role, of course, is to manage that person according to the terms of their employment contract and that's represented by a bold straight line on an organizational chart. Then we have our professional manager and their jobs provide expert input on areas outside the scope of the line manager. So in a school that's typically inclusion or specialized curriculum inputs and that's represented by a dotted line on the organizational chart. And then our third is the duty manager or duty officer and uh, what their job is of course is to be available to immediately respond to any urgent issues that the teacher may have and they're represented in a roster system. Uh, so that's shared out amongst the leadership team, uh, but everybody always knows who's on duty. Uh, how does this play out in the artifacts or tools in a school? You can see then the collaboration map. If you press pause, you'll see the dotted line and straight lines clearly in how that's demarcated. And then you'll see, of course, the other tool here is the duty officer system and protocols. And you'll see those protocols, an image of those that everyone in the school would have. And then the duty officer system itself. You can see one of the principals on duty there and the little sign in the office. And so by building these person-focused management support systems, we make dealing with our issues as teachers and interacting with management a really simple process. And with that clarity, we're able to completely focus on our students, building those unicorn teacher relationships for quality teaching and learning.